Let's start off by stating the obvious. Nothing popular is true, and nothing true is popular. All religion, by definition, is secularized metaphysics. It is dumbed-down metaphysics, or mysticism, for the populace. In this short little video clip, I'm going to tell you what we're going to be talking about in some of the upcoming videos. Namely, let's get to one key salient point. We'll get back to a nod on another video. Samir Nikaya 3.196. Rada asks Lord Gautama, Lord Gautama, Anara, Anara, I hear said Venerable Lord, what pray tell does this term Anara, i.e. Anatman in Sanskrit mean? Just this Rada, Anara means Rupa Anata, Veda Anata, Sana Anata, Sankara Anata, Vinyana Anata, the five khandas, forms, feelings, perceptions, sensations, consciousness, are not myself, not my soul. This is it. All Pali translations, make note of this fact, are exactly the same on Samyana Nikaya 3.196. Did uh, Gautama answer Radha? Anada means there is no soul, Anada? There is no soul, Radha? No, he did not. He simply stated the fact that Anada only is used in reference to 22 nouns stating that they are selfless. Okay? Empty, devoid of via negativa, once again, objective negation. Anada is, by definition, a via negativa methodology, an apophatic methodology for objective negation. In other words, when you burn away all objectivity, the only thing that is left is the pure subject. Okay? It is a wisdom methodology used in all varieties of monism. There are many books written about it. Let's start by saying that in some of the following videos, and by the way, I could do a hundred plus of these little videos in my sleep. I don't know if you're interested in them or not, but from the emails that I'm getting, the responses I'm getting, you apparently are. I could do a hundred plus of these videos literally overnight and in my sleep. Uh, there are at least 40 or 50 that I have just off the top of my head that I'm interested in doing that you've asked for. Let's start by saying that Buddhism is not original, that Gautama himself considered it a heresy or heretical and was actually lamb blasted some of his uh, disciples for saying that he had made or created a new path. Samyana Nikaya 4.117, I found the ancient path leading to Brahman. Majima Nikaya 1.68, is a heresy to hold the view that I have taught a philosophy of my own, something new, something novel. Samyana Nikaya 2.106, I have seen, said Gautama, the ancient path, the old road, followed by former all-awake Brahmins. This is the path that I follow, lost long ago. Just like an overcovered path, lost long ago. This is that path, same very path that I have rediscovered. Udana, I have not come teaching a new path, disciples. Iributaka, I have not made a new path, monks, or other disciples, or devotees. There is no polyprakrit term for monk. The term is devotee. I have only rediscovered what was lost long ago. Gautama is referred to as a Tevijan, meaning in knowledge, a sage, an expert in the Vedas. Gautama is a Vedasotim, meaning a sage, an expert, a wise man in the Vedas. Gautama often referred to himself as Vedagu, means someone who has culminated wisdom or absolute knowledge of what the principle or the teachings of the Vedas are, Vedagu. Gautama is a teacher of monism, Advayavara, Katavatu 204. There is absolutely nothing new in Buddhism, as Dr. A.K. Kumaraswamy and other Buddhologists have stated throughout past, the more, quote, more superficially one studies Buddhism, the more one sees it as an indistinct religion. However, the more deeply one studies, you will see that there is absolutely nothing new or original in Buddhism that cannot be found in the Upanishadic thoughts and other sermonic thoughts of monism of Gautama's time. You have to understand that even in Gautama's time, even though we're talking 2,500 years ago, the principle of the Upanishads, of Advaita Vedanta, which of course came later, the school of Advaita Vedanta, but Advaita Vedanta, i.e. monism, and Upanishadic thought, was already extremely archaic and the principle had lost. All he did was rehash what was already there but had been lost to a great extent. Getting on to some of the points that we're going to be discussing in some of the future videos, uh, let's talk about some of the things that you take for granted in Buddhism, namely that the notion of right view, right thought, samaditi, you know, sama samadhi. The, the word of sama does not mean right. The, the whole notion of morality. Buddhism in its time was in a war of moralisms against the Jains. Who could be the most moral religion and thereby get the greatest donations from followers and noblemen? And uh, there was a, a war of morality with Jainism and uh, Buddhism went out. Uh, however, this term sama 
does not mean write this, write that, as in a morality. I'll get into that in another video. Things that you take for granted, like Buddha is the wheel turner, quote unquote. It actually does not say wheel turner. It actually says in the ancient Pali, is that which turns the wheel. Now, of course, in a modern vehicle, the axle actually turns and turns the wheel. But, of course, in ancient carts and pulleys and buggies, the axle was a solid, fixed, unmoving thing which was drawn by the unknown principle. Of course, it was known, i.e. the horse or the charioteer. But the actual Pali does not say Gautama is the wheel turning. It says he is that which turns the wheel, i.e. the axle. The axle is the ancient metaphysical symbolism found throughout Platonism, all throughout Upanishadic uh, thought and uh, metaphysics, and the symbolism found on the Sanchi uh, carvings. Axle, meaning that which is the centermost part of the wheel. It doesn't actually say Gautama is the wheel turning. It actually says Gautama is that which turns the wheel. Let's upturn the most famous thing that most Buddhists, quote unquote, or so-called Buddhists, take for granted. That being that the notion that the Ariyatengikamagra, the Ari Eightfold Path, talks about right view, right thought, right. Sama does not mean right. Sama is literally, unfortunately, untranslatable. Well, we'll talk about it in another video. Like the Greek term noose is untranslatable. Sama literally refers to a metaphysical state of the chitta wherein it is fully quelled. In other words, a nibbana state of the chitta. In other words, where the chitta is perfectly inflexed upon itself. So instead of right view, right thought, right, it becomes the diti of sama. Okay, I have thousands of citations to point this out to you. I'm just going to point out some of the things we're going to talk about in future videos. But the next time you come across the Buddha, it keeps telling you that there is a doctrine of anatma, and there, there is no self or no soul in Buddhism. Simply point out to them that all translations of Sumerian Nikaya 3.1a6 are absolutely identical. Anada, anada. What Lord Gautama does this term anada mean? And the answer is this, the five kandas are anata. Okay, This is the via negativa methodology. You need to do some investigation and not be stupid. Okay, People are dumb. Buddhas are dumb. Buddhism as a religion is evil, as all religions are evil, okay? We're distinctly pointing out and differentiating religion from spirituality slash metaphysics, okay? Religion is for lemmings. It's the grand Walmart where you buy cheap junk and plastic crap made in China. All religions are the same. Buddhism is no different than any religion. It is corrupt. It is horrific. It has uh, had mountains of trash piled upon it. And it is completely contradictory to what the original teachings say. However, it is logical, unlike many other religions, which are, of course, illogical on their very basis, including within their own scriptures. But let's focus on what Buddhism does and does not teach. I'm going to point out to you, this is just a precursor of what some of the future videos are going to be like. And trust me, I can literally do a hundred of these little videos overnight. A lot of the things that people have found extremely fascinating. And I hope you find them fascinating as well, because they are some of the things that every quote-unquote Buddhist takes for granted, and yet the actual meaning, the actual translation, how it all logically ties together. Being able to put Buddhism inside of a comic book is actually takes quite a bit of wisdom, takes a quite a bit of study. You know, you don't need to study all this stuff. There's a few books you do need to study. I recommend you get the book... If you are not interested and don't have the proclivity to learn ancient languages like most people don't, you know, they're too busy. As a comedian once said, we labor all day to buy labor-saving devices. People are too busy. They don't have 20 years to spend trying to learn ancient Pali in order they maybe have the brains to do so. So if you're interested in learning what original Buddhism does or does not teach, uh, and, uh, you know, you're tired of reading sick mistranslations of the original uh, suttas, try George Grimm's book called Doctrine of the Buddha. That's G-R-I-M-M. -M. Uh, there are several other books uh, on original Buddhism. Perez Ramon's uh, book uh, regarding the Atman. However, it is a very expensive book. Um, C.A.F. Rees Davids. Right now on Cathodos.com, I have a three-volume set by the one woman who co-founded the Polytech Society, C.A.F. Rees Davids. Yeah, the last time I saw a set, this three-volume set uh, online, it went for $3,500. You'd be hard-pressed to find prestigious libraries having a set of this book. This woman translated more Pali than anybody else before her or ever since, and she died many, many decades ago. These books are not her translations. They're actually commentaries and little bitty snippets of all the gold that you're interested in reading. This, you're talking about 1,400, 1,500 pages in the free three-volume set that I personally scanned in hand by hand. I've scanned in hundreds of books and burned up, literally burned to the ground, scanners, many, many scanners over the years, scanning in these 
old out of copyright books, which some of which are the most important books to have, but which you cannot find online anywhere and you certainly can't find them in a library. And if you do find them in a library, they'll be so old and valuable that you cannot check them out. You'd have to put on white gloves and examine them only at the library. And of course, that's cumbersome and nobody wants to do that. So go to cathodos.com and download The Wayfarer's Words in three volumes. Okay, and download especially. If you don't have the time, if you read the introduction, I've got it broken down into six different sections. The Doctrine of the Buddha, written by George Grimm. Just read the introduction. If you read the introduction alone, you will download the rest of the uh, subsequent chapters or sections of the book. Okay? Uh, I'm going to lay out for you, want to restate it once again, some of the most fascinating aspects that you've never heard about or couldn't imagine. And hopefully, if you're a metaphysician and truth seeker and interested in original Buddhism, will knock your socks off. Because I have spent endless years uncovering these things and I'm going to lay, out, lay them out for you very quickly and very simply. Uh, try going over to cathodos.com right now. I've got approximately 35 gigabytes. Everything is free. Nothing is for sale there. I'm not selling anything. I'm not making a single dime. I'm losing money by putting all this stuff up there and spending countless hours and time paying for the website and everything else. Everything is free. Nothing is for sale. So go to cathodos.com and download anything and everything you want. It's all completely free. No strings attached, unlike most things in this world today. There's always a string attached. There's always a catch. There is no catch. Okay, this is for truth seekers and those interested in wisdom, especially original Buddhism. Have it all. It's all for free. I've spent thousands and thousands of hours scanning these books in by hand, page after page after page after page. And uh, thank you, and uh, wait for the next upcoming videos.